Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Overly Vast YouTube channel. It's a beautiful spring day, the sort of day when it's just great to be outside. All our neighbors are out, I can hear lawnmowers going, lots of activity going on in the background. And of course, it's a great time for us to be able to enjoy all the plants that we can grow in our gardens. And if there's one shrub that really adds a lot of spectacular color to our gardens in springtime, it is of course these, the azaleas. Now, I probably don't need to tell you that there's lots of different sorts of azaleas. There's the deciduous ones, the ones that lose their leaves during the autumn time. And then they flower in springtime before the leaves emerge. Then there are the evergreen ones like this one, which are really beautiful evergreen. So they have foliage right through the whole of the year and then erupt usually with lots of this beautiful color in springtime. And of course there are some like the encore azaleas that come back to flower again in the autumn time. Then there are some that grow six to eight foot high and some that are short and compact. A beautiful little red one called Bixby is one that comes to mind. Absolutely gorgeous and perfect for all sorts of sites, whether you have only a small garden and you have only space for one plant or you plant them out in a larger mass. Lots and lots of opportunities and things that you can do with all the different colors. And just so that you're able to get the best from them, here's a couple of tips that you might like to bear in mind if you want to try and grow some gorgeous ones like this old tried and true variety here. This is Azalea Delaware Valley White. Beautiful pristine white flowers with just a hint of lime green in the throat of the flower and it's absolutely beautiful. And if that one's a little too tall for you, then you might want to think about growing this little beauty. This is Azalea Helen Curtis, a magnificent compact later flowering variety that only gets to about two, at most about three foot high and carries these gorgeous double flowers. So it's beautiful for putting in near the fronts of beds and borders, or as you see, mixing it in with some very colorful perennials. Now this gorgeous little beauty was raised by Tony Shamarello in Cleveland, Ohio in 1968. Hardy to zone five and very suitable for our environment here where we get cold winters and warm, humid summers. Not exactly the conditions that many azaleas like, but for my money, this is one that is today probably the best little compact double white flowering azalea in existence today. And the fabulous thing is that when they're in flower, they really last a good long time, giving at least several weeks of spectacular color. And when there's ones like this, the evergreen types that have year round foliage, they look pretty throughout the whole of the year. And also some of them have a very pleasant mild fragrance too. So when you get drifts of them, you'll get early in the morning and sometimes late in the evening, a lovely kind of fragrance that's wafting on the breeze too. Now, as you see, this one has single flowers and that pretty much runs through most of these evergreen types. But there are some that have double flowers and also some really neat ones that have what they call hose and hose flowers. One called rosebud is one that comes to mind. Absolutely beautiful and really quite unique. Now the other interesting thing about growing these azaleas is that as you see here, these plants are growing in full sun. They will also grow in a partially shaded site and in dappled shaded sites too. And what happens is that according to the light conditions, the character of the plant changes somewhat. When they're out here in full sun, they tend to be shorter and more compact and kind of rounded habit. But when you get into shadier conditions, they tend to get stretched up a little bit more and some would say even more elegant. 
I particularly love the fact that these white ones and pale colored ones do really well in shady sites. They're a wonderful way to brighten up dull drab areas and it seems to accentuate the white when you put them back in shaded conditions. So they're multi-use according to wherever you might have spaces for them in the garden. And as you probably know, they come in a wide variety of color types too, from whites through to pale pinks to lovely peaches and reds and deep dark fuchsia purple colors too. Really spectacular. Lots of really nice color combinations that you can put together. And in fact, if you're able to blend these together, many people will tell you that when you see banks of azaleas growing together, it resembles something like a beautiful patchwork quilt. Lots of different ways that you can put taller ones at the back, medium-sized ones, and then smaller ones, and then blend the colors together and get absolutely exquisite combinations. And thanks to the sterling work of breeders like Joseph Gable in Stewartstown, Pennsylvania, Peter Jarrod in Ohio, and Benjamin Morrison at the Glendale Research Station in Maryland and others, we today have a tremendous selection of varieties that will grow and perform well right here in this region. Now there's lots of different sorts. Ones that are hardy enough to be able to cope with our winters and yet resilient enough to be able to cope with our summer humidity on an August day. And over the years we've boiled down a selection of ones that we know to be really good performers. Ones that you can check out here on this channel and also on our website. Ones that I hope you get a chance to grow in your garden. Now whether you're growing them in sun or in shadier conditions, there's one thing that is very important and that is that they really need to be in good free draining soil. An average garden soil will be fine but they just do not like to grow in damp wet conditions. The other thing that's important to mention too is that they love this stuff, organic matter. So when you're planting them, it's a good idea, whether you're planting a single one or better still, a group of them like this, to cultivate the whole area that you're going to be putting the plants into and then in, work in plenty of organic matter. Now that could be garden compost, it could be pine bark, pine needles, anything that's lots of rich humus, that's the stuff that they love. You see, the native habitat for these plants is on the edges of woodlands. So when you're thinking about the site that you're going to be growing your plants on, I'd like you to think about walking through a woodland area and there where there's been years and years of accumulation of composted leaves, that's the stuff that they love to grow in. They don't root deep into the ground, in fact they only root up near the surface. But it's this organic matter that they love to be able to get out into, spread the roots into, and that's the stuff that makes rich luxuriant growth and of course lots of flowers. The other thing that's important to mention too, that ideally they like to be on a soil that's on the pH scale, a little bit on the acid side of neutral. Somewhere around about 6 is optimal. They can take it more acid than that, but once you get into higher limey soils, then you're likely to run into something that's called chlorosis. That's a yellowing of the foliage where things like iron gets locked up and they don't really grow so well there. And one little thing I would mention with that in mind is that if you go into a garden that's had azaleas growing in it for a long time and they have been habitually mulched with a hardwood mulch, sometimes you will see that they're not thriving. That's because that hardwood mulch has composted down over the years and as it's done it's released calcium and that has locked up the iron. So that's why when you're mulching and preparing the ground you really need an acidic organic mix, something that's not going to add lime to the soil. Your local garden centre will be able to help you 
choose the right additive to put into the soil and once you do that as you see you'll get absolutely fabulous results and as I've mentioned in some of our other videos if you haven't already done it it's probably a good idea just to run a little soil test to make sure that you understand just what the pH level of your soil is that will help a great deal now when you plant them first you're going to have to keep them well watered until they become established. Really give them a good soak and then depending on the weather conditions, you might have to do it say once or twice a week. What I do is I usually scratch the surface of the soil and if it's a little on the dry side, that's when I'll give them a good soaking and allow it to get down to the roots of the plants. Then when they become established like these plants here and you've worked in the organic matter and put down the mulch, you'll find that then they really don't require a whole lot more maintenance and also they'll, unless we get a really dry prolonged spell, most of the time they won't need any watering, but that's only once they become established. If you're in doubt, there is a video here on this channel where I take you through the process of how to plant a shrub. It's exactly the same for these and certainly on there it will give you guidance as to how you can water your newly planted plants. So there you are, there's a couple of quick pointers and suggestions that I hope will help you be able to grow some gorgeous azaleas in your garden. Now, if you've liked this video, it would be nice if you could please click the like button because then that will help other people find that information too. And if you don't mind and you haven't already, think about subscribing to our channel too because we're busy posting new videos all the time with hopefully lots of information that will help you be more successful in your gardening endeavors. This is David Wilson. Enjoy your gardening. It's good for us and it's very good for our environment too.